Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. I'm, of course, Gregor Guy. My name is Casey. And for your educational and viewing purposes, we will be presenting this week's episode of Bang Head Step. So I'll just go ahead and toss it over to you. What, uh, what are we going to learn about here this week? Today is somewhat about learning about science, but it's a, basically going to be a short discussion on whether or not curing diseases is the actual goal for pharmaceutical companies. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say my opinion right now. No, there's no profit to be made in actually curing a disease. Being able to combat it with weekly, monthly, daily prescriptions of taking pills is profitable for these companies. Right. And that's basically what uh, this guy, he's an um, analyst at Goldman and Sachs named Stephen Richter. Um, I don't know if he actually wrote I, it. I actually do think I read some of this story. So, okay, go on. I don't know if he actually wrote this story or if, if he was actually just quoted on... Um, on this story. He was probably just quoted, probably soon. But basically, this is kind of what he had to say. He said that, uh, this is a quote, a direct quote, the potential to deliver one-shot cures is one of the most attractive aspects of gene therapy. However, such treatments offer a very different outlook with regard to, our, to recurring revenues versus chronic therapies. While this proposition carries tremendous value for patients and society, it could represent a challenge for genome medicine developers looking for sustained cash flow. So basically, pharmaceutical companies want to keep their profit margins high. Right. So they will not cure diseases. So, so let's think about this right now. So are there cures out there for diseases that... I think there are. I think they have a cure for HIV, you, but they will not release it because then guess what? You get a one shot, you know, well, chance at profit. I'm glad that. So I'm going to have to skip down here to the bottom real quick. Uh, I mean, we can, we, can, we can circle back around if you want. No, no, no. I'll just I'll just say the quote. This is Chris Rock. Everybody should know who Chris Rock is. He's a yeah. he's a famous he comedian. Got the shit slapped out of him by Will Smith on the Emmys or Oscars or whatever. Right. Show that was. Well, the, the award ceremony. That, that's that's a whole different uh, thing. It that is. has nothing to do with this. This is what Chris Rock said in one of his uh, comedy episodes or specials. Specials. They ain't never gonna cure AIDS. They ain't never gonna cure AIDS. There's too much money in it. The money is not the, the money's not in the cure. The money's in the comeback. The money's in the comeback. I don't know exactly what he means by. The comeback. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go as far to say that he probably meant that um, you have to come back to get more treatments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, uh, I mean let's just take like Magic Johnson for instance. You know, right. a notable, notable. Uh, you know, person of influence. We will say. Right. Got diagnosed with HIV. Still alive. All right. How many how many different treatments and, and do you think he probably went through throughout the course of the past I don't know what twenty years something like that. And uh, have you seen that uh, South Park episode where they uh, they cure uh, Magic Johnson's AIDS? I'm sure I have, but I don't remember. Basically, he just put a whole pile of cash into this juicing machine, and the juicing machine pushed out the cash and turned it into a fluid which he injected himself with to cure his AIDS. There you go. Money cures AIDS. You heard it here first. But, I mean, you, you can see... I, I understand the, um, yeah. you know... <laughs> like, these researchers and uh, things, they, they, don't, they don't do these... Uh, they don't work for... I mean, some of them very well might. Some of them may work to try to cure diseases or think think of that but in the in the long term and in, in reality everybody is out there to make money nobody does anything if it's not going to make them money right well i mean you know fact of the matter is that eventually it has to get approved by you know the 
uh, CEOs and, and, and the executives of these corporations right. in order to release right. to the public. They're not going to do that if they're going to take a hit on the other end of the balance sheet right. for what they already have out there. So they, they probably spent maybe billions, maybe trillions of dollars to create uh, medicines, uh, therapeutic and cures for diseases. And if you, they give it to you for one dose for $200, they're never going to make their money back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, which is, you can understand it, but at the same time, um, it's definitely not for the customer. Or for the, for the patient. For the people, I would say. Right. I mean, you're, they just want to keep you alive so they can... Keep um, milking you know, your right. bread account dry, right. in my opinion. So this leads to the second quote um, from uh, Selvin Richter, uh, which is the Wall Street analyst from Goldman Sachs. He says, We don't want to cure diseases because that will be bad for our wallet. We want people to suffer for as long as possible. Even suffering humans enriches us a little bit more. And, and you know, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's not profitable right. for them to actually cure diseases. Right. They would rather, you know, take the other end of the balance sheet and, you know, give you temporary fixes, you know, right. once a day, once a week, once a month. So how long, how long, um, is profit, prof, profitability above morality? For a corporation? Always. Okay, so it's always. So uh, for a corporation. For a corporation, right. But, you know, on a societal level, I mean, at some so, point so in time, if, someone's got to speak up and say something. Do you think that if a corporation uh, found a cure for. A type of cancer right mm -hmm. okay. they, they found it and they decided we're just going to give it out for free to the public the public can come just go to the pharmacy this is never going to happen but obviously um would that lead to lawsuits from the people who uh own stocks in the company to sue the company for not being mm -hmm. profitable mm -hmm. yes i think it would so even if even if they wanted even if they wanted to they would their hands would kind of be tied i would assume right which i mean realistically is something that you know we as a human race need to look at right but how, how do we why, do things you know what i mean see i mean this could obviously tie into like a bit of you know financial and stuff but why do you know People just think the end all game is money. Right. It shouldn't be. It should just be the betterment of the human race. That's my opinion. There you go. I've said it. If you haven't heard it before, you just did. Right. I mean, even even recently uh, with the COVID uh, variant, um, Bill Gates, in his own way, he uh, he said in, to a crowd. It was it was on an interview I watched. It said. Um, sadly, the variant called Omicron is a type of vaccine. So he says, sadly, it is a type of vaccine. It, 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 what, what does he mean that the um, virus is a vaccine? Because I don't know if you know about this, but the Omicron um, type of COVID um, variant, it is basically not a very strong um, variant. So it spreads extremely quickly from one person to the next, okay. but it is not as deadly or or as severe as all the other variants. And it okay. spread through the population so quickly that it basically became its own um, vaccine. Okay. So Omicron is a COVID variant that basically turned uh, almost... A large population of uh, people immune for, to some extent to the uh, COVID disease. All right. Well, um, why don't we have like uh, Omicron parties? 
like they used to have for little little kids when they got chicken pox. Yeah, chicken pox. I mean, basically, we did. We do. We do all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anywhere we go, you're you're having a you're having a. Uh, and, and there you go. We're all immune for like you know six months or whatever. And there, there's always chances of different. It variants. goes away, and then it goes back to actually being the flu. There's always there's always different chances for different variants. So the COVID is a thing that's going to be around for a, a very long time, kind of just like the flu in in a way. Some of them are going to be worse than others, just like the flu. Some of them are going to be not so bad, just like the flu. So you believe that COVID will be around for, you know, another 500 years, just like the flu? COVID's been around. First of all, I can't remember exactly what COVID is. Um, it's like a, a, T, a SARS virus. Yeah, it's a version of SARS or MERS or... And, what, and it, what? it's been around for a million years. It's been around... Uh, I, I don't know about a million years. But it's been around for pretty much as long as peop people have been alive. Um, the problem is when it got weaponized. I don't know if it got weaponized. I think they were just doing testing. I don't think it was a weapon. It, I, don't, I would not say it was as a weapon. I, th I think they changed it to... Um, to scientifically analyze it and accidentally release it to the population. Okay. That's fair. Um, so I, there is one other thing. Um, this came out of, uh, this came from Milton Packer, um, um, a doctor, um, from an article in MedPage today. He said, pharmaceutical companies are developing new drugs in only two therapeutic areas these days. Cancer and rare diseases. Why? These are the only therapeutic areas where exorbitant pricing is tolerated by payers. How exorbitant are we talking about? Most new drugs for cancer and rare d diseases are being priced above 400000 a year per patient. Some drugs are being priced at $1 million per treatment, and prices continue to soar. You have a definition of rare diseases, I, or an example rather. I, I don't probably be better. I don't. I don't have an example, but I would. So basically, there's just um, diseases out there that don't have treatments for them, um, and um, they they focus on these uh, and and cancer because they are uh, either debilitating or they will. Or they will kill you, um, and people are willing to pay just about anything to live. Well, most of the time, though, it's not people; it's insurance companies. Insurance companies have to pay this, right? But if these and that drives insurance premiums up. If if these people are are rich, though, and the insurance company won't pay for it, yeah, yeah. I mean that, but also that's a big if. It's like what you know, one percent of the population. You, you don't think that you don't think that people die all the time of curable diseases just because of how much something costs, and, and if the insurance company wouldn't well, pay for I'm it. I'm sure they do. There, there are treatments out there all the time that an insurance company refuses to pay for, and people just pass away from it because they can't afford it. Like but I you said, know who can? I'm sure they do. A very wealthy person can. There you go. You heard it here first. The one percent. Screwing over the other ninety nine percent once again. I mean, that's how things are and that's how they've always been it's the way of the world that we live in at this point in time today who knows anyway so thank you for putting that together banghead stem we talked about diseases cures big pharma pharmaceutical companies generally some of the grimiest motherfuckers on the face of the earth in my opinion and even if they didn't want to be, they don't have a choice but to be. Due to their fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. Correct. It's an unfortunate game that, you know, they are playing with our lives, I will say. I got nothing else. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for watching Banghead STEM. We hope you learned something. I am, of course, Gregor Guy. My name's Casey. And once again, thank you for putting that together. Everyone out there watching, enjoy, at least try to, the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.